Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video I'm continuing my expansion draft series in which I go throughout every single team in the entire NBA and I talk about which players I would or would not protect in an expansion draft scenario and then in the last few videos of the series I will do the actual drafting of the players in which I will be creating two new NBA teams. In this video it's going to be the Southwest Division and then in the following it will be the Southeast Division. So if you want to go ahead and do some homework ahead of time so you're prepared for the next video so you can compare what you did compared to me then Go ahead and do that for the Southeast Division, as I said, for the next video. But really quickly, before we get started, if you enjoy the NBA, then consider subscribing. I upload basically every single day. Okay, so we begin with the Houston Rockets, and they have 10 players under contract currently, and this is a team that really needs to pay attention to how they're going to go about protecting their players because they're not the deepest team and they are a team that still wants to be good and have championship aspirations moving forward with the backcourt of James Harden and Russell Westbrook. And so with that in mind, I'm going to leave Ben McLemore as well as Chris Clemens unprotected. The conversation for me came down to Austin Rivers, Isaiah Hardstein, Ben McLemore, and Chris Clemens. And ultimately, I decided to keep Rivers because I think he's the best player out of that group and Hardenstein so that they can maintain at least a little bit of front court depth. In my opinion, it didn't really make any sense to leave him unprotected and leave them without a single true big man on the roster for next season, or at least under contract currently. Even with all the small ball stuff that they're going to do moving forward, you still have to have a front court player, a forward or a center on the roster. And so I felt it was important to protect Hartenstein there. I would have loved to keep Chris Clemens around. I think he's a talented player, one of the highest scoring players in NCAA history, but unfortunately him and Ben McLemore are just kind of at the bottom of the barrel here, and so they're going to be going into the expansion draft pool. Next up now is the Dallas Mavericks, who have 12 players under contract, and another situation here where this is a team that has aspirations for being a good team, and they are kind of in the opposite scenario of the Rockets, whereas they have a lot of depth, and so it's not so much about making sure that they maintain their depth, but making sure that they're picking the players that are most critical for them now, as well is moving forward as it relates to them being a good team and a growing team and there were some difficult decisions to be made here but for me i'm going to leave boban, boban marjanovic justin jackson willie cauley stein and alon right unprotected for me personally the two most difficult ones to leave unprotected here were justin jackson and delon Wright. delon Wright specifically i think is a really good bench guard can defend can play both guard positions can play make a little bit can shoot a little bit really does pretty much anything you need him to do at about an average level with the guard position that's a valuable player to have especially at his size in the backcourt and justin jackson is a guy that can shoot the basketball and is continuing to improve as a young player and as a former first round pick just a few years ago and the conversation for me was do I want to keep someone like Dorian Finney-Smith and maybe even Dwight Powell given the fact that he will be coming off of an Achilles injury going into next season and keep someone like Wright, Marjanovic, or Justin Jackson. Ultimately, I decided that Finney Smith is a good enough defender on the wing to make up for a general lack of shooting and that he is going to continue to develop that aspect of his game and ultimately be more valuable than someone like Wright or Jackson. And Powell, even yes, with the injury stuff, He's a really, really good player and a core part of the rotation and at times a starter depending on the given health of Kristaps Porzingis in a certain situation. And so I would rather keep him, but they weren't easy decisions at all. And I would say that one, maybe two of these guys are going to be drafted in the expansion draft scenario, specifically DeLon Wright, I think is going to be a pretty highly drafted player in that situation. We move on now to the Memphis Grizzlies who have 12 players under contract and this one wasn't really that difficult to be honest uh, to decide. It's pretty clear what the core is in Memphis. It's pretty clear what the pecking order is and for me this is how it shakes out. We've got Gorgie Jang, Marco Guterich, Grayson Allen, and Jonte Porter being left unprotected. The two that I feel like are interesting to talk about here are Grayson Allen and Jonte Porter. Grayson Allen hasn't really proven himself to be a good NBA player to this point, but he is still a young player that could grow and develop into something, and maybe you would rather keep him, right? And then Jonte Porter is another guy that hasn't even played for them, has had some injury issues uh, in college or whatnot, and hasn't even played and is more of a stash type of player, and maybe he doesn't even end up being selected as a result of that in the expansion draft and they get him back anyway. But for me, it just comes down to, you know, who are you going to swap out in this scenario when you're looking at the rest of the roster? Valanchunas, Winslow, Anderson, Morant, Tyus Jones, Jaron Jackson, Brandon Clark, and Dylan Brooks. That's a really solid group of eight, and I don't really know how you sub out 
any of those guys for Allen or for Porter or Jango Goodrich for that matter. So for me, it's pretty simple and pretty easy to pick out the eight players for the Grizzlies just because they have such a good and deep roster up and down uh, this group of players that are either good now or have a really strong chance of being a pretty core part of what should be one of the more exciting teams in the Western Conference moving forward as long as the development of John Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr. continues to move forward the way that it looks like it will. So those are going to be the players left protected and unprotected for the Memphis Grizzlies. Second to last now in this division is the New Orleans Pelicans. I won't spend very much time on this team because they only have nine players in their contract. And for me, the player that you're leaving unprotected is relatively obvious, and it's Darius Miller. He is now 30 years old. He's been kind of on and off this team throughout his career, trying to find his role as a potential 3 and D player. More emphasis on the defense and the offense for him throughout his career. But again, it's similar to the Memphis thing. You're not really going to take any of these players off of this list in favor of Darius Miller. Drew Holiday, J.J. Reddick, Zion Williamson, Lonzo Ball, Jackson Hayes, Nikola Melli, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, and Josh Hart. All of those guys are, are either established, good veteran players like Drew Holiday or J.J. Reddick, or their very recent draft picks, either the Pelicans or that they received via the Anthony Davis trade, or Nikola Melli, who has been a nice part of their rotation this season. So pretty simple. Darius Miller is going to be the guy left unprotected here. As I said, not going to spend too much time talking about him. Last up now in the division, before we go back and look at all the players added to the expansion pool in this episode and kind of where we are at overall, is going to be the San Antonio Spurs. And there were some difficult decisions to be made here because I don't really know where the Spurs are going moving forward. They have 11 players under contract, so they're going to leave three of them unprotected. And they have an interesting mix of veterans in combination with a handful of interesting young players on their roster. And the only way that I could go about doing this is, is what would I do if I was the Spurs, right? I have no way of knowing what the direction of this team is going to be moving forward. It seems like the priority should be on developing the younger players and going into at least somewhat of a rebuild. How aggressive that is is going to depend on what the organization actually wants to do. I don't know how likely it is that that is their mindset, given the fact that Greg Popovich is still their coach and is going to be their coach, presumably for next season. And while that's the case, they're not going to rebuild. They're going to try and be as good of a team as they possibly can. With that in mind, with my mindset in mind of prioritizing the younger players, I'm going to leave Rudy Gay, Trey Lyles, and Ch Chimezi, Chimezi Metsu unprotected here. That leaves players like DeMar DeRozan, LaMarcus Aldridge, relatively obviously protected. And then some other guys, Patty Mills, Lonnie Walker, Lucas Manchik, DeJounte Murray, Keldon Johnson, and, and Derek White. Another situation here where like, yeah, you might like Rudy Gay as a player and you might like the, you know, the veteran presence that he provides. Same thing with Trey Lyles as, as a guy that's been in the league a couple of years and at least is part of the rotation at times for San Antonio. You might look at those guys and think, why would you keep or why would you leave them unprotected? Excuse me. All these younger players could potentially be something down the road. And I would just rather have that, whether it's as an asset or as a player, I would just rather have all of those guys. Now, again, their mindset could be totally different and they could let one of those guards go or one of those wing players go in favor of keeping someone like Rudy Gay or like Trey Lyles. Uh, but for me, the conversation really came down to who am I keeping out of the Rudy Gay, Patty Mills, Trey Lyles group? I chose to keep Mills because of his shot making ability, even though Rudy Gay does provide more versatility. That was just my choice and I could see how you can make an argument going in a different direction. And now as we wrap up the video, we take a look at all of the players that have been added to the expansion draft pool here in our fourth episode. We've got two more divisions left and then we're gonna get to the actual draft itself. Some interesting names here that at least I think could be drafted or could be selected and could be relatively big parts of new teams moving forward. I like Grayson Allen's fit on a team in which he's gonna get minutes and be allowed to develop there. Same thing for Justin Jackson. I would say the best player in this group is a toss up between either Rudy Gay, if you're going more on the veteran side or DeLon Wright as a bit of a younger player that could still grow and develop moving forward. And some interesting high upside names in this group as well include Ben McLemore, a guy that has struggled to find minutes at certain times in his career, had a bit of a bounce back year with Houston last year, can shoot the ball, maybe in an expansion team and with more minutes and more opportunities, that's all he really needs to kind of jumpstart his career. Jonte Porter is an extremely high upside guy that I could see a team definitely taking a chance on rather than just another random young guy. Uh, Trey Lyles, again, another guy that with more opportunity could do some things. And then Boban is there, uh, of course, uh, as a nice rotation big. So that's just my personal opinion. That's just where I'm at. Again, we have two more divisions left and then we finally get to the actual drafting of the divisions. As I said, in the next video, it is going to be the Southeast division, which includes the Heat, the Magic, 
and I'm blanking on the rest of them. But that is the division we'll be covering in the next video, as I said in the beginning. If you want to follow along, if you want to you know, do some homework ahead of time, compare what you have to what I have, that would be something I would recommend so you can kind of engage a little bit more with the video. But yeah, there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's video and the fourth episode of the Expansion Draft Series. I appreciate all the support on these kinds of videos and 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 all the, uh, you know, as I said, just the comments on, uh, on Twitter and on the videos themselves. Uh, about how much people are enjoying this as well as you know how nice it is just to have a bit of a refresher and a bit of a different idea uh, in their feeds i appreciate all that feedback so yeah as i said that is going to be the end of today's video and i thank you all very much for watching once again my name is tucker if you missed any of my previous videos then be sure to check out the boxes on screen thanks again and i'll see you all next time